Hey guys. Hey guys. Hope everyone's doing alright. Um, yeah, taking a break from the Pero project, as you guys know. Um, and instead, of just gonna do a little bit of action grooming tonight. Well, actually, for the next few nights. Uh, basically, on Friday, I'm doing a um, masterclass, quote marks, on uh, grooming. So I figured, well, may as well make a, a new asset. I've seen just using the Flip Normals course uh, as a base. So there's no point modeling a whole head. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to kind of go through, um, build a groom that I can use later to teach people how to groom. May as well stream it in the, the process, I guess. Um, so yeah, well, give me one second just posting this. Yeah, so I guess in terms of what we're going to groom, um, feel free to accuse me of being a fanboy, uh, but we're going to groom this guy, because I just figured this is kind of a, a fun uh, groom to do in terms of like having kind of cool uh, guide work and some nice modifier work to do, as well as kind of figuring out how to do these sorts of strays. It's something that's not too challenging to do. Um, and would also fit relatively well in the mannequin head. So that in the series is amazing. Uh, but if anyone drops into chat, please do avoid posting spoilers. Um, I've tried to crop images to avoid spoilers, but yeah. So this is what we're going to make. And yeah, we're going to use Action to do it. So I guess let's just get started. So first thing to do, obviously, oh, I need to rename this. Sick. I did a little bit of adjustment to the the scene. Nothing too major, but you know, there's still stuff that's changed. Okay, so let's select the scalp geo, go into next gen, create a new description, and we're just going to call this, um, oh Jesus, what's his name? Lee Jung. Oh, sorry, tapping the wrong screen. And let's call this head hair 01 description. Let's see shaping guides. Cool. And then we can, I guess we'll keep this visible for a little while. We do, however, want this to be non selectable. So I can only select that guy. It's been a while since the craft opened next gen, so this could be quite a lot of fun. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, so I guess the first thing to do is figure out where the, the hairline goes, or where the parting goes. I think it's around here somewhere. Technically I should do a camera lineup, um, but I'm just going to wing it since this is only a introduction to action for the students. There's no point going through the full process. Something like that will work. Let's rebuild. Something like 12. Drag this away. There we go. I do sometimes forget how nice the uh, the guide tools are in action. Although this is a little bit too reactive, so I'm going to rebuild it down to less CVs. I do need to find one extra reference image. Because the, the main ref is this guy, but obviously I've got one that's a little bit more high res but cropped. So on the other screen, I'm just going to look for that image, but not cropped. Just to help me place the, the center part on it. Uh, or at least less cropped. I guess this one works. Let's drag that onto the. It's not as cropped. Should be a little bit easier to place everything. Cool. So let's start getting some guides in here. First thing is figuring out where 
uh, the hair needs to reach to. Because obviously I'm starting from this point here, which I think I'm a bit too far forward. Also not far enough to the left, so I'll have to move that. But it has to stop uh, just above the left brow. So this is fine, but this isn't. So the hair may be too long in this case. Let's just go into, see if I can remember how to do this. There we go. Yeah, so I'll probably stream for a couple hours tonight. Uh, not a huge amount of time. Um, just because I want... Um, well, yeah, that's what I... Not do a massively refined groom. I just need something that works, basically. Something like that. And let's just fix the bottom of this. There we go. Something like that works well enough. So it's good to add more guides. And just to get something that works, let's copy the shape from this guy. Um, why is that not? Come on. Copy guide shape. I need to put that light into a uh, background layer. Um, let's create a layer. So this should reach his brow, so yeah, I think the length of this is, is not too far off, because it's reaching down fairly straight to his brow. Obviously the proportions of my head are completely nothing like this guy. Like This is a completely generic head that was made for the course. Uh, this obviously isn't a generic head, it's an actor, so a little bit of compensation will have to happen. Um, but we'll figure that all that stuff out as we go. So first thing, you should go up a little bit more dive down. Yeah, so this this is too long by those things. But we'll we'll keep it for now. Cause I think it's the length that we need for the other section. Something like that. Cool. And then let's just get over here. session so this feels so strange feels nice but very strange that's very weird Do feel free to ask. So let's get another ride up here. God, I'd really love it if it just come on, paste. Let's just double check that everything's in here. Yeah. Oh, the scalp itself will be an issue now. Yeah, there we go. That's working. Okay, so you need to go up and back. forward to be doing this stuff. 
hard to tell. We are at a very early stage where none of the guides are really the size or shape that they should be. So I'm going to work backwards through the hairline, or through the parting line. Ideally in a straight line, but... Okay, delete you. There we go. How many guide curves would you typically use for a head? It varies massively. Um, since I started using Yeti, I definitely use a lot more than I used to. Um, but that's just because Yeti's guide system is, is really not that nice in terms of how it interpolates. But yeah, I'd, I'd say like you can typically get to a couple hundred. Um, I do have things on my art station that kind of show uh, how far that goes. Just get you there. I think the hair back here should be a little bit longer. I think the hair in general needs to be a little bit longer. I don't know, this feels a little bit too short to me. Hard to say. I, mean, I don't have any particularly great reference right now. That definitely looks longer. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna make the hair longer. So for simplicity's sake, didn't mean to do that. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to scale all of them and re-sculpt, because it's early enough in the process where I can do that. Something like that feels a little bit better. Let's alt save the scene. And quickly re-sculpt some of these guys. Okay, so yeah, that feels a bit more correct in terms of life. So let's get this going. He's fine, other than that. reference images that would show this section. I guess that one's kind of okay. We'll have him fall forward. I think that's what this one wants to do. I think that would uh, go into copyright, Becca. I don't think I can really get away with doing that. It's a bit too long, but we'll see. Uh, I guess this is where the parting would go. And he feels like he had quite a natural parting. So let's just um, kind of improvise something here. I do have one picture from the back, but I don't think it really shows much. Yeah, it literally doesn't show the parting at all. Like it ends there, but it does show all this curling to the right. So I'm going to copy that. So let's just have that fall down, backwards, like that, and then curl to the right.
I always forget like how quickly I rush this model for the um the flip normals course. Like the skull volume is so strange. Like, the flip normals course obviously is a um not a sculpting course, so I didn't worry too much about the model being accurate. I just wanted something that looked okay in renders. But I don't know. There's times where I look at this and it's like, oh. Okay, so let's get the other side of this parting. And just paste guide shape. Flip it. And I guess we're gonna, as our primary reference, target this one. So we'll look at that for volumes once we get past the initial stages. So let's just get that. Do this. Okay, so you actually sit like that. forward in the ref. So I thought that would be for now. My general style when sculpting, uh, when doing guides, is to do it overly neat to begin with, just so I can get clean layers blocked out. And then once I've got the clean layers, I kind of get guides in bulk. Uh, this guy is curling forward quite a lot, but then back. So I kind of get my layers and lengths established early on while it's still neat, and then I go in and mess it all up. Because I find, at least for the way I like to work, if I mess it up too early on, I find it really hard to manage. So this will eventually kind of go backwards on itself. I think where it completely breaks down. Let me check my other references. Okay, so that's just going down and flipping out. this region, um, but for now I just need to figure out the rest of the hairline. Paste guide shape. Hmm. 
Actually, I think this region will still be going backwards. I think it's further down, the hair gets shorter. It matches the lines that I was just going for. So I think this would need to come out in front of the ear. Although it might be a bit too high up for that, so we'll see. No, that's fine. area. And uh, that feels like I don't need it. And that's almost exactly what I wanted. might be tucking in a bit too much. Someone's getting ahead. Ugh, Nick, why? Don't like that. Let me just check my refs again. I should 
probably lay them out a bit more efficiently. Let's keep it on screen actually so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Just need to find a, the right size for it. In fact, let's force a little bit of room in there. Because I don't need my outliner for this. Also, if you guys don't know what software this is, uh, it's called Pure Ref. Definitely recommend checking it out. It's really, really good. Alright, let's copy a different guy chip. It's when you start filling in other guys that you realize what you're doing wrong. See, what I'm looking at right now is how you can see tips pointing this way up here and down here. So that means that hairs that are further up have to be flicking at the same point. Um, figuring out this guy might be a bit interesting. So we'll have to see how that goes. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. And this groom isn't overly complex. It's, it's a bit wavy, but that's not normally the hardest type of groom to do, to be honest. Long wavy hair, now that's a fucking nightmare. Okay, let's get another guide. I will have to read, in fact, actually, there's something I don't like about that, which is this. Feels a bit better. Okay, now let's just, come on, copy this guide shape. So we don't have any great refs for this. This would be the best, but it's very low resolution, so. The main thing to get in the look at the top is to get this slight like, dip, because his hair kind of has like two main shapes to it. It's like flat here and then kind of a mound here and a mound there. So it's getting that hollowness. It's important, but at least that's what I'm seeing at the moment. When I reopen this tomorrow, I'll realize how awful it is, and then redo it. It is the way. Cool, so next bit, let's go, I guess here, let's give that a go. Down halfway up his ear. Flex like that. We have another ref, don't we? That's like. Yeah, this is the combination of these two. That's what I need to look at right now. Again, in a like, film production environment, you wouldn't really do it like this. You'd, you'd make sure you got proper reference lined up so you can just trace it and get it right first time. Um, but I'm just trying to do something that's more like along the lines of what a student be able to do nice and easy. Just to introduce them to to groom. I wouldn't expect them to do a groom like this on their first one. It'd be maybe a little bit much, but depends on the shooting and how long they were to spend, I guess. Okay, so I'm seeing a bit of a thing like that. Granted, I do need to keep in mind that the cheekbones of my model are massive, and he doesn't really have much of a cheek. Whereas this this guy is a lot kind of rounder in this area. But I think this is about right, so let's just pull that bit further back. Cool, and then... 
you're wondering why I keep um, pacing guide shape, it's just because the interpolation of action guides doesn't consider length. Um, so I keep kind of um, I keep uh, pacing the guide length because that uh, pacing the guide shape, sorry, because that guarantees the uh, the length is the same. Which in this case I want. Um, although at some point I'll be breaking that up a bit. So this shouldn't be flicking up, I know that much. So I think I need to do something more like that, which means it's more than likely to come behind the ear in this case to get that kind of shape, so it's like bunching up. Something like that maybe. Yeah, it's just falling backwards. Yeah, this is the area I'll probably redo most often. I can feel it. Uh, so that's doing the right shape for that angle. This one I can revisit once I've got a few more guides in place. Let's just get a bit more going. feels like too soft of a curve. Something more like that achieves a sharper curve. Some of the guys try to kind of follow each other. I think that's something that helps a lot making grooms feel at least somewhat natural is have some guides follow other guides rather than having them all crossing over all the time. Granted, you, know, you shouldn't have every guide following every other guide, it just gets a little bit plain looking, but definitely having regions where a few guides just kind of meet up almost like a clump. In a way, it's kind of guide clumping, but not actually clumping the hair to the guides. So, let's just very quickly... 100 for now. Uh, set you to like 12. lost. Yeah, that's the first crash of the stream. Cool. 
so let's just get Maya back open. See if this will actually have some data with it. Did that crash on launch? It did, okay. Let's see what we can do to recover some of this, because I had my guides. Um, Okay, so we lost 20 minutes. Um, so I do have to find the crash directory. What was the crash directory? My uh, recovery files. Okay, it's on another screen. I'm just gonna look for that. Um, okay, so. Is there another way to find it? Like, is there a project um, project window? I'm trying to remember if there's a recovery data thing in here. See how far back that actually is. Oh, gross. Okay. Um, no, I do need to find that crash data because it did have the files. Um, oh, what can I do? I can have this stuff on screen while I look for it on the other screen. That'd be great if it could just give you a directory though. This is this is where I'm at, and username isn't there. Like my username isn't there. There are some extra files there.
Why does it save it an MA file? Okay. I was looking for a folder. Aha! Got it. Okay. So let's just get into Maya. And do this. Okay, so let's just select my guides. Okay, cancellation window, utilities, um, guides to curves. Okay, then file, um, export selection. Let's explore that as an MA. Uh, guide backup. Back up. Back up. Cool. And then reopen that scene. Cool. Kill that. Delete these. Import these. Where are they? Go back up. Then curves to guides and delete curves. There we go. So now I don't have to carry any like the trash file stuff with me in terms of like the um, stuff that the crash creates. So let's just quickly go in and do this again. Paper around point eight is the starting point. Start around point eight. Um, so it's twelve from now. And add a zero between you. That should be the default settings, I feel. Um, let's just lower that taper a little bit so it feels more freshly cut. Cool. So, get rid of you. And get back to doing guides. How long did that put me back? Okay, so that was 10 minutes of recovering a action crash. Let's go back on screen. I just need to remember not to press this past. Um, so yeah, let's start getting some guides that are kind of in these areas. And copy guide, paste. Cool. So this is definitely too long. This hair needs to be shorter at the back. Uh, for now, what I'm going to do is block it out, ignoring the tip of the hair, like just get the shape. I think something like that. Can you delete points from the end? Oh, didn't mean to do that. Fuck. I mean, I need to do it again. The undo key doesn't always work when you're doing stuff with this. So I'm just going to get the general shape again that for now. And then let's go into our control points. Can I delete these without crashing? I can. Nice. So is that the right length? I feel it needs to be a bit shorter. I feel like that's the correct length. So let's rebuild this to 8. And just curl that out like this. I guess we're going for this one primarily, right? So is that going backwards or forward? I'm going to assume forward. It normally is. Let's just match that angle. Stuff like that. Okay, and let's just copy that guide shape. I'm going to place a few at the back, roughly where I want the hair to end. Stuff like that. Let's just throw this to be the right shape. Oh, roughly anyway, we need to get this thing. So this would be the lower end, stuff like that. Cool. 
And then what's the back middle doing? Okay, not very helpful, but let's just. It looks like it's going that way. Something like that. I'll ignore the existence of the collar. Let's just do the same general flows. Okay. So, uh, I guess we could do a little bit of work in the back, can't we? So let's just add. I think in terms of length change, it should start changing about here. So for now, I'm going to select this guy, copy his guide shape, paste it here. So the length gradient starts here. And let's just, I think that's going to be going like that. So let's do that. That. look like it needs to pull that way a bit so that means we need more of this going to get that angle cool and we'll want to paste that guy shape so let's copy this guy put him there this guy looks like it needs to go like that. It's kind of a crazy one. And then it curls back in on itself, I think. Might be getting a little bit too close to the head, so I'm going to move it back a little bit. Oh, that feels a bit too far away. Cool. Then let's get a guide in here. I'm going to paste the guide shape because I know that the length at the top should be roughly the same. And let's have a quick look. It doesn't really tell us much of them straight that way. So I'm going to assume it kind of travels. I feel like this is actually going too far for it. Let's just take a quick diversion to fix this. Something like that. That gives this guy a bit more of a springboard. So he needs to go like that. And then I guess kind of follow around this guy. So he's going to travel backwards. Crash into him. Something like that works. Paste. What's that button do? I always forget. It's not hovering. It's not um giving me tooltips, but Get a guide in here, and then most guides from this point on, except for this area, I'll be just trusting the shape that or the, the length that it gives me. So you look like you need to travel with this guy. Well, this might be too far forward, so let's ignore that for a moment. Uh, do we have any better ref? No, we have very few ref from this side, so let's just kind of improvise something for now. It's not really much 
there's like a hollow area here which is kind of interesting to look. We can't even. Um, so I guess this hair should be curling that way. Which means he would do something more like that. I guess we'll, we'll find out later. Uh, I'm going to, obviously this is our main ref but we don't see much of this area so I'm going to trust this side more. So let's get a little bit more stuff going on. Start flicking that back in, I think. Okay, you need to come up more. Which that means you need to move. Just like that. Okay, so this shape's kind of weird too. Okay, so let's place a guide right there, and I'm going to trust the length of that guy. And I'm going to assume he was had his hair cut by a competent barber, so I'm just going to get the length, kind of a line where the length is the same. And just quickly, well in this case of this guy, I'm just going to throw it out, so I remember to go back to it. Same with you, and just work on this one to begin with. So there's a little bit of information there. So I think this guy is doing something more like that. So we just need to find a way for it to look good from angles other than this one. Because this angle is awful. Um, the hair here is going that way, so let's pull him back, which means that we need to go forward. Which means that this continuing to go back is kind of strange. Here is suggesting. Okay, so let's just place another guide in here. Paste the guide shape. just throw in a region map as well. Um, uh, dude, will live be able to watch later? Yeah, um, all my streams are recorded and they stay up on YouTube. That's why I stream to YouTube, to be honest. They stay up, they get uploaded. Um, yeah, by all means, feel free to watch it later. So, let's get a quick region map in there. So let's just go region map. Create um, then let's just go head hair a one. And I'm gonna set you to let's go fifteen as a starting point. You can always change it later. And let's also get that you have assigned. Chrome ball map, what? Okay, let's just assign a blin. And that will allow X-Gen to paint. There we go. Just move this off to the side for a moment. A solid blue brush. Radius is fine. I 
Uh, actually, let's turn that off for a moment. Block out the region, and then we can add that sort of stuff in. It's falling okay. Yeah, that's falling fine. We're getting a few that are crossing over, but that's just a resolution thing. Um, okay, so the next thing to do would be to create a map for you. So let's just go create map. Region mask. And let's go um, head, hair, one. Set you to black. Same resolution because that seems to be working great for you. And yeah, paint to white. Okay, so don't like that. working quite well, so head, hair, a one, mask. Uh, yeah, let's start you as white, it's easy. Okay, and radius is fine. Let's go in with black. And I'm going to turn on reflection. It's going to draw a, a hairline.
the edge a little bit. This is something I've never really tried before. I uh, figured may as well give it a go. It's always worth trying new stuff from time to time. Now there's a proxy. Let's save the texture. Save the ptex. I need that parting line to be a little bit cleaner. It's a little bit too chaotic right now. Stop at about eight thirty, maybe nine o'clock. So let's keep getting some guide work in there. <laughs> I forgot about this. What's that actually doing to the groom? It's amazing how action tries to find a way to make these guides work. Like, honestly, it's so impressive. Like, after using uh, after using Yeti for the last like almost a year, going back to action does feel very nice. Sorry, Colin. Yes, he has grown on me, but the guide tools, or the comb tools, I should say, groom nodes, just don't work the way that feel particularly nice. Okay, so this is diving in way too early. It's causing some issues. It's just a bit too short, doesn't it? So we want this to be kind of curling back this way, right? In fact, no, because this is here. So we need this to kind of travel up and over that bump, whatever it happens to be. So it's bump, push in and out. And that will help me get a bit of a, like this. Something like that. Much 
much going on with this. Just curl it that way. Does it ever curl up? It does. Okay, so we need that to do something like this. Which I'm going to want to do something like that to make it look a bit better. This needs a bit of tweaking. So I'm currently not operating on the reference, I'm currently just operating on what feels and looks right to me. Or looks good, not necessarily right. Because when you're not necessarily trying to do something photorealistic, it's fine to kind of improvise a little bit. Assuming you know the, the rules. this region supposed to be doing? Definitely feels flat here. I just, need, I just need more ref for that area, don't I? Okay, well, sculpt these in bulk right now. Let's see what happens. G1, how you doing? Let's throw some clumps in. So, this hair's too short, isn't it? Um, obviously, we'll get to that in a moment, but something we do need to address. Which, if that's too short, it means the entire top of the head is too short, unless the fringe has grown longer. <laughs> Thank you. 
I always like to do a little bit of a pinch at the start. Not much, just enough to kind of separate the roots. And then... Find. Okay, so we're going to need to do a map for that. They're also a bit too small, I think. So, set of maps. 1.5 density. We may need guide clumping to accurately get this. In fact, yeah, let's, let's throw some guide clumping in there. This isn't something I normally do, but if we need it, we need it. Obviously, it requires a lot more guides to get right. That'll work for these areas back here. Uh, let's generate, let's try 7.5. That'll work for now. And we'll add one layer of subclumping. So let's go clumping. Set you uh, about three. Throw a quick cut in there. Shader on that um, to save the scene. Okay, so let's create a AI standard hair. Then in the attributes, shader group, Arnold. Cool. And then hair tube shader. This guy and assign. Cool. It's curious that it went to blue. render. This is obviously not a suitable groom. Um, this isn't at a point where you'd actually want to do a proper render, but I just want to check the shader more than anything. Beautiful. Um, let's just go into uh, save our scene. Go into next gen. Preview and output. Set to renderer. Arnold renderer. Batch. Um, and then let's just try because there's normally another step that I do but I just want to check that there you go 
Cool. So let's get rid of that and get back to actually doing some grooming. Um, so, it's this sort of area we want to fix now. Oh, let's, uh, it's weird how it's giving me the full thing here. It's very strange. That should just give me a colour. As in, that should just display as a colour rather than an expression like that. Maybe that's something they broke in the latest version. Or it's a feature, who knows. Um, copy guide shape. Paste guide shape. Nope. Yeah, I need to uh, bring it over. little bit too flat isn't that so let's just grab all these guys and just lift these up for this. Stuff like that. I feel like you need to be a bit different, don't you? I think it needs to be more up here. It's given us. Let's just get something in there. Just consult of uh, side ref. So I think I should be just flicking back. I will scale just a little bit. Let's get a little bit more. So this hair here, to me, seems like it would come from here, which this isn't. So let's block that first. So this is roughly what the hairline is. So we scale that until it's about right. Let's copy that shape.
a bit further up. Come up here. This is where we start talking them in. You can see this hair kind of coming from here. Put that in like that. So kind of this hair is kind of being influenced by both. And then this is tucking in behind. Which kind of complicates things a little bit. So we'll we'll assist this one a little bit, we'll loosen it out, but then push it back. I guess around here the hairs are just flicking up. what I was saying earlier how you place a guide and then later on when you add more guides you realize how wrong it is. And that process repeats like forever. But actually this guy maybe should hug up to this. starting to push it a little bit far, so let's pull that in a little bit. In fact, yeah, he should probably be more like that, right? Hey, that's back here, is that right? I need to get some side refs of this guy with his hairbrush back. For now, let's just get a hair at the hairline. Where should this go? I feel like these should go further down, the two of them.
Hey, Gib. How you doing? Sorry, I only just saw the message. Don't like this hair still. But there is a lot of kind of hair that's just traveling backwards. There. In fact, I have a feeling that this is just a layer of strays on top. And that this guy should probably go back. So let's move that bit further up here. And that allows guides that are placed here. And that's kind of already doing what we want anyway, but... Which means that you're completely the wrong shape. Although there is this. Doing n hair or x gen? Um, and this is x gen. N hair is a different process, to be honest. Unless you mean n hair grooming, in which case that process is, to be honest, long dead at this point. It's not something I'd really do anymore. It's something I used to do. My first few grooms were n hair and paint effects. Needs to be pushed close together, but for now, I'll ignore it. That guy went back here so bad. <laughs> okay, let's 
get one more noise up at top there. Another percentage affected. has a bit more of a texture to it. I just gotta keep making guides. That shape's a bit flat. Let's also just increase the uh, CV count a little bit. I was using before, are they? Um, oh, because that was 0.75. I was remembering a different thing. Let's set you back to zero. Step that way back.
more frequency on these guys. Okay, so that's working. No point. Number two. Starting to get a bit more interesting to look at. Obviously we need to do like tons more guide work and break up and that sort of stuff, but <laughs> that's just it's so funny to look at to me. Uh, we also need to break up the hairline itself and also this overhang. It's kind of gross looking. Like how even the hair is, it's all lining up, which is a sign of a badly planned groom. So and there's the, the reason there. The ones at the hairline aren't really doing anything. Um, so let's just pull these guys back. I'm going to lie them a bit more flat to the head. As you can see here, it's, it's a little bit high and then it just comes back and hits the head. Which mine currently isn't doing. So let's get a bit of that in there. Yuksha on the hairline. And I guess you as well. Although this one I'm less keen on pushing all the way to the hairline. So for that will do. And that will just help lift it all the way. It's a bit more depth within the hair. The next thing to do is just quickly fade the hairline. But I need to check my actual hair count, don't I? Um, do I have a log? Seventy-six thousand. Uh, a little bit low for Asian hair. Let's go one twenty. Let's just do a little quick pass in the shader itself. Obviously the lighting's different, so we do need to keep that in consideration. Let's say a bit too rough. Uh, I do need a bit of variation as well, so let's get a little bit of... How's that look if we crank it? Obviously too much if we crank it, but... That's something. We do need to get some random white hairs in there, but honestly, I don't think I know how to do that in extra. So I'll need to do a little bit of work. I'm sure it's not too difficult. I do it all the time in Yeti, but it'd be good to, to learn how to do it. Do a little bit more. A little bit more melanin in this guy. Actually, how much of that is just... Okay, so that's just the specular being a bit too much. So if we go to... Um, ten.
keen on that. So we are getting hints of red, but this is too red. So back to doing guide work. Although I do want to get some um, some random white hairs in there at some point. Obviously this parting needs to be uh, a little bit less clean too. I just need to get some clump noise in there actually. Let's just quickly throw that in. I think I've got a little bit too much noise going on as well. And this needs to come further forward. Also further down. I think I've underestimated the length at the top. And this is kind of gross. So let's just quickly get some noise in these clumps. Uh, that's not where I do it. Let's get our load expression noise magnitude. Actually works alright. Let's just quickly modify this. Uh, put that in another set of brackets. I always like to use excessive amounts of brackets. I just find it easier to read. There we go. That's more like it.
cause a little bit of chaos. And do the same for this guy. In fact, let me just quickly go back. Cool, cool. Um, back to guide work. It's not this place, it's this one, right? You're gonna do the sculpts too. Um, absolutely not. You, um, you definitely wouldn't start a groom before you've done a sculpt. Um, basically, I'm doing this groom right now because I'm delivering a class at a local university. Um, so they want me to kind of go through the basics of groom. So I've just got a scene that I made for Flip Normal tutorial I did, and I'm using this as like kind of a base. Um, but yeah, you, you you wouldn't do any grooming before you've got a model. I'm just using this as a generic head to kind of work from. Okay, so I need to actually look at some ref while I do this. 
Um, I think that's curling that way. Yeah, I guess so. Do I have any good views of this? Shape's completely missing. Well, that's what this was attempting to be, right? Yeah, you need to put in a bit more effort, don't you? Um, yeah, this is the area that will have the most work done to it next time I open this scene up. It should be tomorrow. Changing All things being well. I should have really sculpted a, a basic head, uh, sculpted a basic hair kind of layout. And I need to break up this area back here. This is all just going sideways, uh, which I don't like. So let's improvise a little bit, make something more interesting, just because I don't have a, a good set of ref. Yes, it's quite a visible length difference between these two. Yeah, I think at some point I need to do a video where, or maybe a series where I just do a photorealistic room. Like go through all the proper stages where you do all your actual ref search or even ref capture with one person, and then I can kind of line up cameras and that sort of stuff. I feel like that's really important for me to do at some point because in terms of my public work, I've only really ever done it the wrong way, which is not lining up reference and that sort of shit. I say wrong, like it's it's just a way that would lead to the least appealing work. Um, at least for photorealism. I guess appealing is the wrong word there, but you get my point. Short at the front, so I might do a quick pass now. Okay, yeah, let's go into our tool settings here. Turn off lock length. Let's just focus purely on shape for a little bit. Um, let's rebuild to eight. I 
I'm going to rebuild this a little bit higher, actually. Let's go 10. I'm going to rebuild every single one of these to 10. I can just use the normalize key. It's looking a bit better. Although these do need to come in a bit, don't they? Like that. So now so I'm caring less about consistent length and more just about getting a, a good shape. Without the limitation of um, length. Which I think is a habit I also need to get into. Because I currently, I think I care too much about length being really consistent. Which is helpful, definitely if you're simulating especially, but sometimes it gets in the way. Don't, don't worry too much. Uh, that's the, the everybody's uh, somebody's interested. Almost in Anything you can be interested in, you'll find others. But it's absolutely stupid to spend your time doing things you don't like. Need a guide there, right? Yeah, I thought so.
This is the area where I'll turn lock length back on because I still don't know what's happening in this region. So there's no point messing up lengths yet when I'm already going to be fighting against my own inconsistency. Let's just do something like that. This guide, I think, is overly simplistic. So I think we're going to try to curl that in like that, which allows him to go down. Push up, push forward, push out. Recognizes some. Where do you recognize it from? I think Zeno Belgum sees this in one of his um, breakdown songs. to me on Facebook. Do you want me to share it with the stream as well?
for it. Alright, cool. Give me one second. You sent it on Facebook. Sure, give me one sec. Let's close this. Close you. He's looking cool. Um, let's drag him over here. Becca's working a little gingerbread man at the moment. He's kind of cute. I like him. Uh, raise the IOR on your Chrome ball, by the way. Yeah, I look forward to seeing what he's like once you start get the, the high frequency detail stuff in there. And sort of like subsurface on the ice thing, it'll look really cool. Nine o'clock. I've been streaming for. Let's see. Um, I've been live for two hours, fifteen minutes. So I think that's a, a good place to leave it for now. Um, he's not awful. Like, I mean, there's a lot wrong with it, but for two hours and fifteen minutes, it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, we'll get back to it tomorrow. Continue working on it a bit, make it look a little bit more presentable. Um, I'll be working on it. Um, probably until Thursday night, so what, three more nights? So I guess we'll get a total of like six hours, eight hours work done on this guy. So yeah, um, feel free to check back tomorrow guys, and we'll continue working on him from this point where he is right now. Um, I'll look at, in my free time, I'll look into how, um, you know, how on earth do you do um, uh, custom attributes in next gen, because it's something I've not really personally done. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll be back on again tomorrow. It's nice to see, um, it's actually quite a lot of people who've liked and uh, viewed this one, so maybe going back to X-Gen is, is good in terms of views, but um, obviously we'll finish all my current projects that were already on Yeti. But yeah, we'll we'll continue this on X-Gen uh, until Thursday night, and yeah, hope you guys have had a good night, and see you again tomorrow. Bye guys.